continue our conversation uh, with uh, Bongani Bongo MP, and we need to talk, of course, about the ANC, don't we? Where are we with what some would say is your political home? How are we feeling at the moment? About uh, the ANC? Mm. No, the, you know, the ANC is the, is the longest um, liberation movement in the, in the continent. And it is highly respected by a lot of people all over the world. Mm. And uh, it, it was and uh, still is the instrument at the disposal of our people to change their lives, to make sure that uh, they finally get to be in charge of their own lives. Mm. So it is an important vehicle for the people of this country but not only for the people of this country, because I've almost visited almost half of the continent. And every time I, I finish a meeting, the leadership in the continent will always whisper to me and say, please, go and tell the ANC leadership that the ANC is not for the people of South Africa only. Mm. We as African people are looking up to the ANC for a total liberation of the continent. Uh, but, but surely last year with the local government election, there must have been lessons to be learned there. There must have been a message that you heard from a majority that used to, or, or the population that used to vote for you in its majority, and now almost splitting that vote with your opposition. Uh, surely there must have been a message that you have learned. I mean, surely the ANC cannot be arrogant enough to say, even with the results that you have received from last year's local government elections, you are still where you were, of course, to, uh, when you first, of course, were democratically elected into power. Yes, you are quite right. There are a lot of lessons to be, to be learned uh, by liberation movements uh, across the SADC and the continent. There are a lot of developments uh, also in the world wherein you will find that the liberation movement faces challenges. But as you are aware that uh, as the biggest liberation movement in the continent, we, we will um, from time to time look at the successes and the weaknesses with an attempt and aim to correct what must be corrected and um, do what the, it is expected for us to do by the majority of the people of South Africa. But you'll know that uh, since 1994 till now, our people are getting much more wiser. There is a lot of development in terms of, in terms of knowledge, the internet access and so on. So, We've got to do things differently and yeah. adjust to the new ways of doing things like any other person is doing in the world. Yeah, but for you, what were the lessons then as a party? Because there's elective conference that's coming, and in reflection, what were those lessons that you learned last year? There are a number of them that we need to improve the service, uh, service delivery to our people. And part of what was done was to increase the quality of cadership that takes leadership in the, in the local sphere, uh, which uh, we think it will yield fruits as we are as we're going forward. So the, the NC is responding to the lessons that uh, we're getting and we're, we're getting from the electorate uh, from time to time. Mm. I have a tweet here, uh, Mr. Bongo, from uh, one of our viewers on at ENCA, uh, CJ Chauke, uh, using the hashtag, by the way, our leader Bongani Bongo. Uh, it's quite a long tweet. I just want to summarize what he's saying here. Uh, why did you not fight step aside harder? How's the coffee? <laughs> why did you not <laughs> fight <laughs> step aside harder? Is the question from uh, CJ Chauke. I, I don't understand what, uh, what we mean about harder, but uh, you'll note that the, we had had a conference in 2017 a conference which resolved that uh, there must be, among other resolutions, mm. there, are, there are a number of resolutions. Among them is the issue of step aside. And uh, we, well, part of what the resolution says was that, was that we need to also check the constitutionality 
And uh, fighting it harder would mean going to either a policy conference or going to the next conference and, uh, and look at it and change mm. it such that it is able to address the issues that uh, uh, majority of members uh, are raising. I personally think that, like I said earlier, we have, we have introduced the, the constitution of the republic after 83 years of a serious fight against apartheid. And part of what we were fighting there was to have the Bill of Rights, Chapter 2 of the Constitution, being inserted there. Mm. So Chapter 2 is a very, very important, because even amendment of Chapter 2 requires a very serious number in Parliament mm. for it to be, uh, to be amended. So part of what it says and what we fought for was the, the, the section around the presumption of innocence. Mm before a person is guilty. Before so was it unfair? Be, it is, uh, it was is, it unfair on you? It is unfair, not on me, it's just uh, unfair on an, using an objective test, not on any individual. But it's something that was tested, it will have to be reviewed in a manner that it's in line with the constitution. Because we can't put a constitution to the people of this country and we, as the ANC, we don't follow that particular constitution mm. because mm. we have introduced the constitution mm. and the kind of society we want to build because we have, we have committed to in building uh, a non-racial, non-sexist and a democratic so society. So in building that society, we must lead by example mm. and take leadership on the kind of society we want to build. Many people in the ANC actually died because they were not given a, a right to be heard. The likes of Solomon Matlangwe and other leaders of the ANC mm -hmm. were not given a right to be heard and then they were killed. So this right comes with a lot of um, a price in it that people who are either accused of this and that must be given a fair, a fair uh, chance to to, to, to exhaust their issues in the courts. Mm. We have learned recently in the case that involved uh, the Treasurer General of Mpumalanga, Mandla Msibi, mm. that the people who were witnesses came in the fore and said, uh, we were actually bought by the leadership mm. to say this man has murdered. Bought by what leadership? They mentioned some leader in the ANC in that region that mm. he, this leader brought us to, to to implicate this man in a murder. And that matter is still uh, surprising to, ev to, to, to everyone. So the reason why we need an objective test against which we test everything yeah. is to avoid people setting up uh, other people mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. same way that uh, another one would say, he will buy this one to do these other things and paint those people wrong. Right. But the second matter, is the matter that uh, on the case I attended in, in Cape Town, there was a lot of noise in the whole country that uh, Bongo was corrupt and so on. I went to the, to the court in mm. Cape Town. I went through the process because I respect the processes. When I got there, I got into the box. After the state presented its case, the, the, the judge said, um, there's no case to answer from this. With that being said, uh, because we have to go to a break, Mr. Pongo, do you hate each other as comrades within the ANC? If you're telling me or telling us that the leadership or there were allegations that there's a leadership that almost um, accused, wrongfully accused Mandlam Sibi of a crime that he did not commit. Those were the rumors that you're hearing or the information here from other comrades. If you're saying that happened uh, amongst comrades, if we look at the political killings in Kezer and the majority of them being ANC uh, members killed with allegations and accusations that it might be their fellow comrades, um, is there internal sabotage and hatred and disunity within the ANC? I wouldn't um, say there is or there is no disunity, but you, you know we are we're, we're, we're members of society, all of us, and as society we respond differently to a kind of things. So um, there, there are people uh, who may be hating you, 
they may either be in the organization or outside the ANC. So how they react to the hatred they have against you, it's a, it's, it's a subjective matter and it differs from one case to mm. another. Mm. So I do have people who hate me outside the ANC. I do have people who hate me inside who the ANC. Who hates you in the ANC? I wouldn't uh, know because I will need an objective test mm. to say this one hates me. I, if I was use subjective means, I would just pick up any, anyone because of a particular decision he has taken. So I would, we need an objective test against which we must test uh, who hates, who does not. Mm. That's the state of... Uh, what looks like ahead of an ANC elective conference. We're going to talk uh, a little bit of ANC again a bit later. We're also going to talk about uh, some other things that people are tweeting about, and I'm sure you're all aware of it, uh, court cases, etc. a little bit later. So keep those tweets. I'm getting so many here mm -hmm. on at ENCA, so please keep them coming in for Bongani Bongo. Uh, it's at ENCA. Also, you can use the hashtag the SA morning uh, as well. We're going to have uh, Mr. Bongo back with us again in a couple of minutes from now.